Okay, this is a video on uh, learning, teaching yourself CSS and HTML. This first video is going to be on HTML. So uh, you can teach yourself pretty much any type of coding. I recommend this site here, w3schools.com, and they have HTML, okay, and if you click here, you can learn just about everything there is to know about HTML. HTML5 is the latest version, so you can see whatever changes that uh, have occurred recently. Learn all about graphics, media, APIs, uh, reference sheets they have. I'm not going to go into all of it, but just enough for you to have an idea of what you need uh, so that you can follow the future tutorials, which is going to be how to create your own website on WordPress. So I have this one document that I sort of put together from the all of the different pages from this site. And so we're going to learn by looking from screen to screen how what the code looks like and then how it appears on the page. Now HTML controls the layout of the site. It controls paragraphs, headings, tables, bulleted lists, things like this, pictures, and CSS controls the uh, style, meaning the color, uh, the size of the fonts, uh, all kinds of different things, uh, borders, uh, margins, things like this. So let's start from the beginning. This is a, every HTML document begins with this, this code. Um, you know, uh, exclamation point, doc type, space, HTML, okay? And then uh, this one tells the computer that you will be writing in English. This one uh, talks about what character set uh, is needed. This is still a good one, the meta name description. Uh, that means that this one I copied from the um, W the let's see what's the name of w3 schools okay uh, so their description would be free web tutorials if you were doing a website on uh, landscaping you would uh, change this to landscaping comma landscaping design comma landscaping packages you know whatever keywords you wanted to put in here in the description uh, actually uh, I want to correct myself. The description is you just write, say, a short paragraph on what the site is all about. And you just write it as if you were, it's a blurb, okay, like a paragraph. The keywords is where you separate everything by commas, as you see here, okay. This is where you would put real estate, I mean, excuse me, landscaping, comma, landscaping for real estate, uh, for residential and you separate everything with commas. Then here would be the meta name author. You would put your name here, okay? And then this one is, this one you don't really need if you don't want it. I just thought it would be interesting for you to understand this. This uh, tells the, um, the page to refresh every 30 seconds. If you've ever gone to the Drudge Report, and you're reading there, every so often it automatically updates, uh, refreshes the page, and this is the code that makes it do that. This one here is uh, telling the, uh, the browser to, uh, it's telling the, uh, the computer to see which type of viewport you're looking at the page with. Are you on a desktop? Are you on a tablet? Are you on a mobile phone? Okay. And this one here, okay, is giving a base reference. And this is so that you can use local links for your, um, for your images. So if you look over here, down here, I have two images. Uh, this one has a full link to the image, and this one has a local link. All right, so I'm going to change this. This is from, this is just a made up link here so that this wouldn't work. So if I change this to Deerfield Web dot uh, and then save, 
Okay. Then if I come here and I refresh, you can see that the picture now shows up. And that's because this gives the, the base link right here for all of the pictures, okay? So after this initial section here, you're gonna come to the head section, okay? And in the head section, it contains the title, it contains, um, let me highlight this, it contains all of the styles that we want, and this is where you would also put, you know, JavaScript, you would put a link to your CSS page if it was a separate page. We'll go into that more as we begin to build the website. But anyway, you would change this to be the website title, okay? And now this stuff here is not seen on the web page. This is just talking to the browser and telling the browser how to how to uh, present this page. And this section here is containing CSS. And I'm not going to go into a lot of CSS uh, because um, that's going to be a separate video. But just to show you how this works, the background co color right now, you can see it's powder blue. And we're going to change this to, um, let's change it to, uh, red okay and then we're going to save this and then we're going to come over here and uh, refresh it and you can see it changes the background color to red so let's go back and change this to powder blue all right there you go Okay, and then after this, here's the end of the head tag, okay? And all of this stuff here is not seen on the page. So everything that is seen on the page begins with this body tag, okay? So that begins what you see up here. And as you can see, the first one here is a paragraph. And this is the, the coding, uh, an initial P, okay? Then you put the paragraph and then this close tag here forward slash p okay that's the end tag and as you can see it is um it separates it from the next paragraph now this one here is how you would write a tool tip and what a tool tip is is if i come over here to this window and i lean the mouse over this paragraph you can see the i'm a tool tip come up so if you wanted to change the tooltip to even a paragraph, you could, you know, go inside these quote marks and change it, okay? Now, this here is how we break a line. See, this sentence will be forced to break a line right here. And this is the code that controls that. So if we remove this, okay, it pulls it right up here, all right? Now, Okay, so here is a link, and all links look like this, okay? They begin with A space href equals, quote, HTTP or HTTPS, and then, you know, the, the rest of the website, close quote, and then close bracket. This is what gets highlighted or underlined, okay? And this ends the, the link. Okay, this ends the live link. So all links have this. All right, and so here's one right over here. Now, let's see. Uh, this one here is an HTML5 link. And this one, you don't need the quotes. This has changed recently. So let's see, we took the quotes off and it's still a live link, okay? Now, let's see here. All right. Actually, this is pulling from a cache. I don't want to get into that. But if you wanted to open in a new tab or a new window like I just did, you put this code in. Target. Oh, I'm on the wrong keys. How can this be? Whoops. 
All right, that's the um, that's the coding to make it open in a new page. Okay. Uh, let's see, and that's HTML5, no quotes needed. Okay. All right, now sometimes you will want to control the spacing. Like for example, this is poetry. So you would use this pre-code. And what that does is it, it sort of sees how you have this set up here and it recreates that over here on this page. And that is done with these pre-tags. Okay, right here and right here. And then this little line over here, this is the HR line right here, HR. That puts in a horizontal line, okay? Now, here, are, here is the link for a photograph, okay? Right here. It begins with image space source SRC equals, and then you put in the full quote here. The full, I'm sorry, full link here between the quotes. And then alt is, if somebody for some reason doesn't have, I don't know what it is, uh, if they're set up on their computer to not view pictures, I can't imagine anybody does this anymore. But in any event, the alt tags are what Google um, search engines read, and this is how they learn about what the pictures are about and what your site is about. So you always want to use keywords here uh, as to what the picture is and how it's relevant to your site, okay? And then this is what is called a local link. We went over this earlier, see? It just begins with the actual images folder. It leaves this, the base, out. Uh, okay, but it knows the base from that code that we put up above. All right, and then you just put in the actual picture name, and then again, you put in the alt here. All right, and then come over here, and these are the headings, okay? And as you can see, heading one is the, is the biggest, and heading six is the smallest, and they're all controlled with these tags, okay? Now, these are bold. Uh, let's see, this is creating a little problem here. I think it's B, isn't it? And let's see, I <clears throat> am. All right, small. I don't know if this is. Let's see, and this one is and sub and sub. All right, so let's see, that might change this here. Okay, yeah, I changed it a little bit here so you can see them. Okay, now. Okay, where's the this text is normal, bold and italic here? Um, hmm, something is HTML bold text. Hmm. Let's say bold. Okay, so it is uh, it is close B. That's what I wanted to check here. All right. So oh, here, this one I had didn't have the strong on here. That's what the problem is. So let's see. Okay, that was the problem. See, because I didn't have this close strong tag, it made everything bold because it was reading all of this as wanting to be bold. Okay, so you have to open and close all of these tags. These are how you create uh, italics and bold print. This one is deleted text. Um, I had to comment this out because it was deleting everything, uh, you know, past it. Let me see if I put the closing text here, if that would be the end of it. I think that would, that would end it, and then I don't have to comment it out. 
let's see. Yeah. Okay, so that's deleted text, and you can see how it uh, crosses it out. And then inserted text, it puts that in. Then subscript and superscript. Okay, you can see how they um, how the computer handles that. All right. <clears throat> and then this is bold and italic. Uh, let's see. So what we'll do here is we'll put a break here. So we'll create a new, see, it comes down here, bold and italic. Okay, and here's the same thing. Uh, it's putting them before the, uh, before the text to be changed. All right, so, okay, so down here, let's see here. This is build a future, here we go. Um, this is how you put a small quote in by a Q and then a close Q. And as you can see, it puts the quotes here. And then abbreviation here. Uh, let's see, World Health Organization. Who? Okay, so here is, um, it's sort of like a tool tip, but it's, it's an, an abbreviation title. And so you can put it in these parentheses surrounding the who, and then when the person leans on it, they will get this sort of tool tip telling them what the H W H O is. Okay. And then here is a block quote, and it uh, here's the co here is the code block quote. Okay. And then cite, and then it gives the um, the HTML. Let's see if you can see that if you lean on it here. Uh, let's see here. For over 50 years, I see. Uh, this is probably just uh, being read by the uh, by the computer, I guess. Okay, but anyway, this is the coding for a block quote. Uh, let's see here. All right. Okay, and this is an address code over here. It, it sets it up almost the way you would see it on an envelope. Okay, and then here is the scream. If you use the cite quote here, it um, puts it in italics. Okay, this one is copied from the other site. You don't need that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so BDO. Uh, let's see. So as you can see, this here is BDO direction right to left, okay? And as you can see here, it's it's writing backwards. Now this would come into play if you were, say, writing in Hebrew or some other language that's written backwards. You would use these codes, okay? This here is a comment. And as you begin to change your CSS and maybe you know your site gets bigger, you want to always put it in comments so that if you come back six months later, you can remember through these comments, these little notes to yourself, exactly what you were doing or why you did something a certain way. Okay, now this here <clears throat> is a little bit about CSS. Um, it is taking this um, headline and it's coloring it blue by using this code here. Style equals color blue, <clears throat> semicolon, close quote, okay? And this changes it. Now, if we change this to red, you'll see it work, all right? <clears throat> there it is in red, okay? Uh, this comes into play if you, you, if you have coding in your CSS file that makes all of the headlines blue and you want this one in particular in red, you can do it what's called an inline styling. And that's how it's done. You just open this H1 tag and add the style equals color red. Don't forget the semicolon and the quotes. <clears throat> okay. All right, so let's see here. And this is going into, this is another link, okay. And then here they're talking about the new window, which the target blank. We already learned that up above. Okay. Now let's see here. Uh, default ASP image smiley. 
Um, okay, so this one is controlling. So let's, um, let me see, where are my images? Here we go. So we're going to use placeholder 250 placeholder JPG. <clears throat> 250 250 placeholder JPG. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then let's see if that one comes up. No. Mm, oh, I need my images folder. Let's try that. Okay, so here we, uh, as you can see up, up above, this picture is, is much bigger, but this controls the width. They put this style in here, style equals, and then they put the exact uh, CSS that they want. So let's make this 150 pixels and 150 pixels, and we'll have border, two pixels solid uh, black. Okay, and we'll save this and then we'll refresh and you can see it changed it here. Okay, now let's see. Okay, so this one here is more of a bookmark. All right, down here, a bookmark. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this because you probably won't use this right from the get go. And what you're doing is you're giving this an ID, this H2, you're giving an ID of C4, okay? And then here's how you would link to it. Um, you would have the link A H R E F equals, and then in quotes, this, the um, pound sign is the code for an ID name. And the C4 is the actual name. And then you would jump to the chapter, okay? Uh, so anyway, that's how it works. All right, so now we're going to focus on this table here, okay? And as you can see over here, it's a table, but you can't even tell because there's no styling at all. So let's come up to the table here. And first of all, we're going to change the width to 50%, okay? And then we're going to change the border is 2px solid black. Okay, and let's see, save that, and let's go over here. All right, and as you can see now, it's, it's half the width, and it has a border around it, but it only has a border around the table. So I really want the border to be around all of these things in here. All right, so this is the table row, table header, and table data. Okay, and all the data goes in the TD between the TD um, tags, all right? So there's a, a much easier way to do this when we learn CSS, but this is inline styling. We're going to change it just inline here. Style equals border 2px solid black, okay? So let's just copy this, copy and put it inside all of these table data and table header uh, tags. All right, and save it. Then let's come over here and refresh. And as you can see, they're all surrounded. Now, see how this has a double line here? So we're gonna come up here and we're going to put in here um, border collapse is collapse. I think that's the code. Let's see. Let's see if that's it. Okay, yeah, that's what happens. See, and what it does is it doesn't, this border collapse tells it to collapse if there's another line around it. So then you don't have the double and triple lines. Okay, so that is a table. And then in order to change the table information, you would change these areas here, okay? And this one here is uh, basically telling you how to, remember I said earlier that there's an easier way to do it? 
on a CSS style sheet, this is how you would do it. You would put just this one code here and it would, it would control all of the tables in your, in your uh, website. Okay, and then there's also um, row span and call span. And what that means is that, like, let's say, for example, we just wanted one title up here where it says first name, last name, age. Okay, so what we'll do is, okay, we will put it over here. We'll put call span equals three because we want it to span all three columns. Okay. And then we'll get rid of these two guys. All right. And let's see here. Save. And let's see over here. Okay. Something went terribly wrong. <laughs> okay. T H T R. Let's see here. T R. So let's see here. Call span. Oh. You know what? I had this crazy um, colon instead of the quote. So let's see if that's the situation. Yes, that's it. All righty. So let's try. Let's turn this back into a table header. All right, and see. And then we will also put here text align center. And see if that centers it. All right, let's see here. All right, there we go. All righty, so that's how you would do call span. It would be, and it would work the same way if you wanted to sort of merge all of these. If you wanted one uh, column to take up three, the space of three columns, you would use uh, row uh, call span, call span, and row span. Okay. All right, and so the next one here is how you would do bulleted lists, okay? And this one would be just a regular bulleted list with these tiny little circles. Uh, the next one is uh, how you would do numbers, okay? Then ABC, numbers, lowercase letters, Roman numerals, and lowercase Roman numerals, and they're all here, how you would use those. And then the same thing here, a description list, DL, okay, and D DL is um, description list, and then DT is, uh, is a description, uh, uh, I forget what it stands for, uh, but it's pretty similar to, the setup is pretty similar to the other lists, okay. Uh, this one is a nested list, uh, so you would maybe just print something like this out. I'll put a link to this down below, and you can just print this out, and if you need to do this, you'll have the coding right there where you're working. It makes it nice and easy. Okay, and then this one here is talking about how to use span style. The, for this instance here you have a heading okay that's being controlled by the h1 but you want this middle word to be red so the way that you would handle it is you would surround it by a span tag and then you would put an inline style style equals color red okay and that would make it red uh, then if you needed to put something inside of a frame uh, this would be the coding for that okay and here is your first JavaScript, okay? You would click on this and it puts in the date and the time. I'm not gonna go into this because um, you don't really need to know it, especially if you're gonna be working in WordPress, all right? Um, and then we already talked about absolute file paths versus relative file paths with the pictures. You see how this one has the full link to the picture and this one only has the images. Okay, and uh, let's see, this one here, this is sort of the end here. These are the sections of a document, the header section, okay, the nav section. Uh, they have a new one called section, an article, an aside, a footer, details, and summary. These come into play, especially when you're building the actual website, because the Google search engines, they read this. They're now using artificial intelligence, and this gives the 
uh, the computers an idea of uh, what your website is about and these particular headers make it even easier for the for the search engines to uh, better understand your site we'll get into that more later and that's basically all that you need to know about HTML there's lots more that you can learn so if you go to the site that I was telling you about w3 schools.com you can learn you know lots and lots of things about HTML and CSS so anyway that ends our HTML video you'll be able to understand everything that we do when we build our WordPress website and the next videos are going to be about learning the basics of CSS I'll see you then